Hello all, here are OS Reviews, you're watching a retro look back at the Verizon Razzle. This is a pretty nostalgic phone for me because it's one of the earlier messaging phones I checked out back in 2009, and it's the Verizon Razzle, which was also manufactured by the rather obscure company known as PCD, and it competed with other feature phones of the time, such as devices manufactured by Pantech as well as by Kyocera, and these are companies we no longer really see here in the States. This phone was unique because it actually has a QWERTY keyboard and it swiveled up to the front, as you can see there, and creates an interesting tilted angle for you to type on. So it's going to be great for people who don't want a full smartphone uh, like a Blackberry but still want a physical keyboard to type out messages and send those. It also includes an interesting front blasting speaker along with dedicated music control. So this is also a music phone on one side. So it's a pretty unique form factor and design and so we're going to take a look back at this product. The Verizon Razzle originally came out and it sold for around $100 with a two-year service agreement. It's not the thinnest phone on the market, but it also isn't too bad in terms of overall dimensions and feel in the hand, even though it is constructed mainly out of plastic. The screen in front is pretty bright and vibrant, even though viewing angles are not so great. It does a decent job of displaying your images, your numbers, very basic mobile web. You don't have a full web browser on here or anything like that. And it has a pretty glossy coating on the top as well. Controls, you have access to a 5-way D-pad with an OK key. There is a speakerphone key, which is kind of interesting if you hold on that for a few seconds. It allows you to turn the speakerphone on or off manually. It's also unique because you can use the front-facing speaker as the speakerphone, which offers pretty good audio quality. There's also dedicated hotkeys for the messaging application for contacts, talk and end, which, which dubs as the power key, and of course the three dedicated skip track, play, pause, and the music control button which launches the music player. It's all pretty simple and straightforward and all the buttons are pretty easy to press, tactile and responsive. On the left hand edge you had access to a volume rocker which also was used to control the volume of the music when you were in the music application. There is a dedicated proprietary charging port as well as for syncing, a bit unfortunate because it didn't use a mini USB or a micro USB, but there was a standard micro SD card slot for expanding the memory and a 1 gig card was included in the box. On the other side there was a dedicated hotkey that took you to a list of shortcuts, so pressing on this takes up a quick launch menu and there's haptic feedback on this phone so it just vibrates whenever you reach the end of the menu. There's also a dedicated camera launch key for the 1.3 megapixel fixed focus camera with a vanity mirror on the side, so very simple. And interestingly enough, when this phone originally was released, the company did not have a video recording functionality on board, but an update through the software was made possible, but you had to go to a Verizon store physically and get someone to help you download the new operating system, so that was a huge hassle. The top also featured a rather bizarre 2.5mm headphone jack. Not a full 3.5mm, but 25 which was very disappointing for a music phone at the time. And because the keyboard is dominated on, this, on the bottom edge of the phone, the battery compartment is located on the middle, and it's a pretty flimsy plastic plate, but you have access to a decent sized battery for a feature phone. And the phone can last for around three days before you need to recharge it because, again, you don't have too much connectivity options and processor and everything is definitely low end, so it's not going to drain too much power either. It does have Bluetooth on board. There is some basic GPS functionality. You can see there's a few animated home screens as well. But interestingly enough, after a few moments of inactivity, the animation pauses just to save on battery. So taking a closer look uh, down below here, this is actually just a mono speaker. It looks like dual speakers, but if you cover up the left side, the music gets muffled. Still, it gets respectively loud, and a front-facing speaker is um, definitely great for music enthusiasts out there. This is probably one of the first times that we saw a truly front-facing speaker on a phone, so this definitely was, in a way, the predecessor in terms of design to the HTC Boom Sound, which is commercially very successful. So rotating the keyboard onto the other side, we have this interesting tilted angle, which makes it a bit easier to type on. Although I will say that the keys at the time were definitely very small. This is about the same size as a Palm Pixie keyboard or a Palm Centro. So it's a very tiny keyboard, even though the buttons are pretty tactile, responsive, risen about the surface, and they're bubbly and textured. 
they feel very nice when you tap and press on them. They are still very small, and so if you have larger hands, it makes it a bit more difficult. Still, we like the layout overall because there's uh, a full four rows and there's dedicated controls for the dialing pad, although you have to kind of limit yourself and not accidentally press something. And there is predictive text entry as well. So when you're typing out a message, it gives you suggestions on which words you're typing so it can make the experience a little bit faster. So overall, the keyboard responsiveness is good. It's backlit. It's just not too large in terms of size. Taking a quick look at the menu system next, uh, it's a very standard affair. Uh, we saw those with almost every single messaging phone or basic feature phone at the time, and it uses a proprietary Verizon operating system that they customize. There are a few different themes that you can use to change the wallpapers and the color on the bottom as well as the banners, but basically have access to a battery indicator status on the top right hand corner, airplane mode, or if the airplane mode is off, you won't see that there a basic message uh, key, hotkey there for a quick launch uh, into creating a new draft, sending it to someone. There's also a contacts that you can go through your address book and pressing a menu goes through the entire uh, operating system. It's pretty simple. Again, there's a haptic feedback, uh, recent calls, settings allows you to turn on Bluetooth, display settings, memory settings, USB settings, setup wizard, and over here we have a dedicated media center, which is just for playing back your uh, music, looking at pictures. There were no games at all built on here, but you could purchase ones through Verizon, but they weren't very uh, appealing games. Unfortunately, you couldn't just download any Java games that you wanted and put them on here. Mobile uh, web here, very, very basic. Uh, good for checking maybe some news feeds, some basic weather feeds, but that's basically it. And some extras includes a calculator, a tip calculator, a calendar, a stopwatch, and the no frills stuff that you typically get with every single phone these days. Uh, and taking a look at pictures, again, the menu was a little bit clunky, and uh, overall you can kind of see what the uh, camera is able to, to do. It is a respectable job for a 1.3 megapixel sensor, although of course your images will be very blurry by today's standards. Uh, it still does a okay job for emergency situations. Here are a few of the pre-included wallpapers that were built in, and you can see some of the animations as well. Interestingly enough, there wasn't a dedicated video player, which was a bit disappointing considering the size of the screen isn't that bad for watching a few clips, but that was something you could not do, and you also couldn't visit mobile YouTube and play back any video clips either, so uh, your speeds were capped uh, essentially at a pretty slow, I would say roughly 2G speeds. Uh, again, this is a CDMA phone, so it doesn't support any SIM cards or GSM world roaming or anything like that, so you're stuck in the States with this. Um, and basically, that, that's it. Those are the basic few applications built on here. Taking a quick look at the music player, because that is one of the main selling point here. If I rotate this, you can see there's an animation that pops up and shows that you have flipped over. Happy on the music he wants. I can take a look at all my songs. I can also search specifically, but it's a little bit tough with the keyboard on the back. But you can take a look at your list, and it's pretty fast as far as loading up uh, your clips uh, from a mem memory card on the side. It doesn't really slug, sl slow down or display any signs of sluggishness. So if I wanted to play a quick title, let's not play too much, but you can see you have access to a album art on the left hand side. So it does support album art and you have access to your volume controls on the sides, as well as skip track controls down below. You can also press and hold for uh, scrolling back and forth between a track, which works pretty nicely. And also other options including changing the equalizer settings. You can also play a song, uh, but still go back into the main screen and take a picture or call someone. So it is Technically, a little bit of multitasking supported. You can also shuffle a song, have different sound effects, and so on and so forth. And uh, basically, the music track will be playing in the background, as you can see here. We're not going to really play something just for copyright purposes, but uh, the speaker itself does do a respectable job. But then again, if you cover up with one hand, uh, the sound quality can get muffled. Call quality and reception was also pretty good, at least here in Seattle, Washington. We didn't have any gripes or issues uh, as far as service at the time. So anyways, this has been an interesting look back at the Verizon Razzle. This is again produced by a rather obscure manufacturer, PCD, and the design was definitely interesting. It was something that 
was not uh, really something we've seen before. We saw a lot of simple Verizon messaging phones, uh, but those just featured a QWERTY keyboard on one side, and this one has a flip flipping design, which we thought was innovative and unique at the time. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this unique retro look back video. Thanks for watching your OS reviews.